Hey, I'm Nick Filardi. I co-host with Jason Thielbar on the world's second finest podcast. Every week we talk about 90s bat books, but we also talk comics, movies, books, TV, both new and old, that we love. What you're about to listen to is an unedited version of that conversation. This is the Two Read Pile. Jason, what are you bringing to the Two Read Pile? What's on the Two Read Pile for you? So, uh, uh, as I mentioned in the uh, the full episode uh, for yeah. watching, uh, I, I recently uh, rewatched Mulholland Drive uh, for the first time. Probably going to just watch mm-hmm. whatever David Lynch is on the Criterion channel right now. Uh, and I was like, oh, yeah, um, I've had this book for a while that I picked up at uh, the beloved book bar in Niana, Connecticut, and it's uh, New School by Dash Shaw. Hmm. Uh, I haven't heard of this. Uh, it was published in, God, I was going to say 2010, but I don't think that far back. Have you ever read any? Uh... Oh, yeah, it was, well, it was probably published in 2013. It's published in 2013. Yes. Have you ever read, any, read... Uh, Dashaw? I, I, have, I have heard nothing about this person. Sell really? me on this. Tell me. Tell oh, me my God. It. Bring well, it. Well, so, so the thing that reminds me... Um, um, Dashaw's work always kind of reminds me of of like David Lynch's work. It's it can be uh, really uh, surreal uh, and weird and dreamlike. Uh, his hmm. art style changes constantly. Like I'm going to show yeah. you some of the art from this book, and then like look at his art from like some of his other books, and you're like, what? What? Why? Why? Why did you completely <laughs> but, but change? Why? I mean, this is this is amazing. <laughs> but and. Um, I'm I'm halfway through New School right now. I haven't uh, finished it. I think I'll probably finish it tonight. Uh, it's sort of about uh, <laughs> it's sort of about these two brothers who go to this mysterious island uh, called uh, X because it's shaped like an X, and there's an okay. amusement park being built on it by this. Okay. Group. It's it, but but it's 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 uh, um, the first characters you meet. Um, are uh, this this boy Danny and his older brother, and them and their parents talk very strangely, uh, like so. They're just to give an example, at least at the beginning of how Danny and his parents uh, talk. Uh, sure. Uh, and Danny's uh, older brother too. Uh, they're in a museum and. Uh, <laughs> Danny's uh, father, they're looking up at dinosaur bones and Danny's father is telling him, telling them the story of Jurassic Park, of like what Jurassic Park is about. <laughs> okay. Right? Yeah. But here's how he's telling them. Okay. All right. Listen closely, my children. I must tell you of a novel. It concerns a theme park where they have successfully recreated Dinosaurs, the visionary author, dreamer of Westworld, has a background in science, and it, this informs the uncanny resurrection in this Jurassic Park. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. But they're not they're not shocked. They're not like they just they yeah, they, yeah. They, they talk out like and and I just gonna flip like to a bit further in the book, and then this is kind of kind of representative of um what a lot of the pages uh are are like and and it's weird it's this intense beautiful dreamlike quality to it man Um, it's it's like okay let me let me me just there for for a second for just a second yeah you know that there's a youtube video that i have to put together and then i have to like hunt down pieces of art from this book like is this am i even gonna find any of this book online yeah. it was published by fanographics yeah yeah okay you will. okay that, all right I, Fair I, think, enough. I think most of dash shaw's stuff has been published by either uh, dnq or fanographics so like okay because you know sometimes sometimes you pick stuff and i'm like oh yeah like, fuck like where like i do a google search and it's just like nothing and i'm just like uh uh <laughs> My my next two reads gonna be some like some like socialist screed that was like Xeroxed in nineteen eighty six and like right, sold yeah, on the I'm streets like, of like I, Memphis. I, don't know how to get, I, I have no idea how to get this into people's hands and I have no <laughs> idea how to display this. 
<laughs> I have no idea how to really describe it other than that, like, uh, it's exactly the kind of shit that I love. It's exactly the kind okay. of, um, it's exactly the kind of comic books I think that um, deserve uh, a lot more play than they get. But also at the same time, I kind of sure. understand why they don't because they are intensely weird, <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, so I get you like did, that. You did couch this whole thing with like, so I was watching Mulholland Drive the other day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think, you know, yeah, I think I think I primed it enough. You know that, that right, people. Right. Love, if you are uh, that understand. kind of person, you might yeah. like this kind of book. Yeah, but it, but it's just such a beautiful. Uh, it's such a it's such a beautiful story. It, it's taken me a while to read it, mostly just because I I I drink in the pages and I want to drink in the pages. Uh, sure. But I just I just want to say one more thing about it though. If you if you can at all like get the physical copy because um, as that page that I just showed you, there's a lot of these. Um, blocky uh washes uh that are over uh the inks which just look like sharpie they just look like just straight drawn like sharpie and i love it um but the way the way the book is the way the hardcover is and the the um the stock of the paper it sometimes almost makes me feel like i can feel uh the weight of the watercolors like have you ever had a sketchbook that you just filled with like watercolor stuff yeah yeah and like it's just a little bit more heavy when, sure, when you yeah. when you turn the pages. They're like, using like a thick stock on that book. Yeah, yeah, yeah and the yeah. and that that's something else that like tactileness is just really the the, the whole thing just really like man, I'm I'm such a sucker for it. this is this is my nice. this is one of my one of my favorite kinds of things in the world. I don't know how much I'll end up uh, eventually liking it, but. For right yeah, now, yeah. I'm really, really digging it. Uh, New School by Dash Shaw, like published by Fantagraphics, man. Everybody. I'm going to check it out. Every, yeah, everybody get it. Get ready for some weirdness and uh, not for I'm, kids, I'm ready. by the way. Not, uh, not but, for kids. <laughs> you know, just just to, you know. Uh, what, do you, what, do you, what are you packing this week? This is a weird to read pile. Um, oh, hell yeah. I'm Hell yes. I'm, so you brought you brought a book that is definitely not for everyone and <laughs> weirdos only. And yeah, then yeah. I'm bringing I'm bringing the essential guide to comic book lettering. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. This is uh written by uh Nate uh Picos. He uh runs Blambot, Blambot, he which is a site that sells fonts and things like that. Did- um I think you told me about this when it came out, didn't you? Or I think at some yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. I picked it up. I picked we it were... up. Yeah, I picked it up when it came out. Um, I hadn't read it yet, but I knew that it was in my future. Like I, when I saw that it came out, I was like, I was like, I have to, I have to buy this because when I was in college and I was making comic books, uh, they were teaching us how to letter with the Ames lettering guide, which is the it looks like a little dial with some holes in it and you put it on like a T square and you rule out the lines and then you hand letter. And so like those things they're neat, but, (laughs) but archaic, archaic, uh, difficult to use. It's so I learned on that stuff. I learned on that stuff. And on top of that, I'm terrible at hand lettering, like just awful. And, I keep, I kept practicing and I kept practicing and I was like, we had read, um, a couple of books we brought to the two read pile, or I had read a couple of things that were, I had like stumbled over some of the lettering, um, November and, um, uh, honor among punks was hand lettered that I was stumbling over a little bit too. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was like, I was like, I knew that I want to make my comics legible, but I didn't really know anything about getting into um, lettering at all. And on top of that, like lettering is vector based and not pixel based. So there's a kind of like two schools of, of making art on the computer. Yeah. And I'm very much Photoshop. Like I am pixel. Like if, yeah. if i i do not understand how illustrator works i just i just do not get it so i was like i need help basically i, I, I so, never realized it was uh it was vector based 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all in Illustrator. So huh. this book very precisely walks you through not only like how to do the actual lettering, but also like what a letterer even is, how to freelance, you know, like what kind of page rates you should expect. Like this book trains you to be a letterer. It like walks through everything in like a way that's like clear and also like the most efficient way to do it because they're like, your time is valuable as a freelancer. And if you're going to be a letterer, like you got to get this thing done quick. You know, it's got to be quick. It's got to look good. You got to put your name on it. Done deal. Get it out the door. Um, Which it, as well, a colorist, you're like, yeah, right. That's, yeah, that's my fuck. Yeah. Let's like, let, let's go. And there's a lot in here that I was, that I didn't really need, but there's like a lot of questions that I had that were just like fundamental, like so much of lettering is incredibly mysterious to me, even being in comics for like 20 years, because like, just like, okay, how tall do I make the letters in a digital file? Like if I'm lettering on like, you know, six by 10 or 11 by 17, like, how does that, how does that point change? Like, as far as like how tall to make the letters, like how do I make what, what word balloons look good and what word balloons look bad? Like all these little details of like, okay, where do I put the tail? Is there a method for like where the tail should go, where it shouldn't go? You know, like it's just like, once you get into the weeds of like actual lettering, you start to like be like, oh my God, I'm in way over. Or at least I was. I felt like I was in way over my head. And so, yeah, this this book very, very easily like lets you build um, not only like your skills as a letterer, but like walks you through and like how to make templates so that you like are sitting there with like a blank page. And then it's like all your lettering tools are around the page. I'll probably put this up on the the YouTube so people can see the uh, Nate's workspace. And so like you can just drop the art in and then like copy and paste like balloons and stuff to like get it to where you want it kind of thing, like mess around with it a little bit. So um, I'm hoping that this alleviates one of my pain points that is keeping me from making comic books because I noticed that like I did like a, a test run of like four pages that were like a to it was a total shit show jason i did this little four page horror story and it was like it was like i was hand lettering it it was kind of a disaster and then like i i started like patching things in because my inks weren't very good and like especially when i had to get like super tight i was i was just like not practiced enough with a brush and i felt like i needed to use a brush because that's what everybody tells me but i probably should have used like a little bit of microns on like faces just to get like some good detail in there and you know i was just like real in the weeds real out of practice and like i didn't realize that i should just lean into my strengths and just be like oh i should just draw this on the computer i sit in front yeah. of photoshop for the last 20 years, what the fuck am I doing with brush in my hand? Like, let's just get into Photoshop. And it took yeah. me doing those like practice pages for me to realize that. And then it also made me realize that like, oh, my lettering is a fucking atrocious. Like I need help. <laughs> so thank you for uh, the inspiration because, you know, I think that's a very good point that you're never if if you're scared of starting something or if you're uh, 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 panicking yourself out of starting something, uh, you, you're never going to know sort of what not to do in, until you do it because right, you started right. doing it in sort of for you the wrong way because you haven't been using a brush or a pen or like real but for, and, for and a lot like, of a lot of how i learned how to make comics too was in 2003 being taught by people who made comics in 1995 which yeah. is just like not the way it's done anymore and it doesn't play to any of my strengths that i have now so it's yeah. like just i was just really it was like good to get it done because i learned a lot about like what processes I want to keep and what I want to cut. Yeah. 
how to narrow yeah. in. Yeah, yeah, but I but I think but you're never you're never going to until you start, you know. Right. And, like and I even didn't, I didn't realize that like this is the other thing is like I kept thinking, oh well, I want like a tangible piece and I want to get away from the computer. You know, like I want a tangible piece of art. And I still feel that way, but I know I will be faster and better on the computer. And then I was listening to um uh I was listening to an interview with um, the woman who's color who uh, drew a lot of black hammer, Caitlin. I'm blanking on her last name, but she oh, was I talking see. about, she was talking about how she was doing everything like in paper. And then she realized that like, she's ending up with a stack of paper that she pages that just will not sell at cons, you know, stuff that just like, she'll put it out every day every convention just won't sell just because what's on the page just doesn't really, you know, it's, it's not that it doesn't, it works for the story, but it's like, nobody wants a page of talking heads where with no iconic characters, but if you're drawing yeah. Spider-Man punching Rhino in the face, do that one on paper so that you can sell it at a show kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so if I'm like making horror comics for me and I'm not trying to sp sell Spider-Man, I can just work on the computer all day. And that was yeah. like, something that I realized in like doing this process and trying to figure this out. And the other thing, like I said, is, is lettering my, my just like, I just needed to get, I either needed to hire somebody or get a grip on it. And yeah, I'm such a scattered person when it comes to process where I'm like constantly rewriting it as I'm making it, which is probably not the way to do it. But like, yeah, it, the thing is, is like, I don't have enough experience writing and I don't have experience lettering. So like I start drawing it and then I'm like, oh, I got a different idea now. And then I draw it differently. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, well, now the script needs to change. The script needs to change. The letters need to change. So I can't really pass it off to a letterer until I nail everything down. But I'm like, I just need to do it all myself. I, You know, like. Yeah, yeah. What I'm saying is I read this book because I'm a neurotic mess <laughs> but but i think but i think what you came out with is a is a really solid piece of advice which is um that you which is that uh it's it's a good idea to uh to play to don't be afraid to play to your strengths whatever whatever they are you know so sure. you're more so you're more comfortable so you you can just start doing it but also like you did, like, don't be afraid to be like, okay, I can't get a handle on this lettering thing. I'm I maybe if I get a book, it can help me yeah, out right. and it can help me figure right. it out. So it's like, look, look for instruction as well, but also like, you know, just think about like, oh, what's the thing that you're most comfortable with and whatever thing it is that you want to start and just start with that. Like start with like, you know what, like any personal trainer will tell you, like, if you can't do a push up, that's fine. Start with doing the easier version of a push up until you can. Right, you know? right. But, but and this is like, the thing. It's like I think that maybe at some point my writing will get tight enough where it's like I can lock a script, and at that point I can probably hire a writer or a letterer. Yeah. Then then I'd be comfortable with that. But until I get to that place, I kind of have to cobble it together myself. And like, so all of this is like an exercise in like, okay, how do I narrow in to like making the thing? You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And it's the other thing too, is like, I didn't even know, like I color a lot of stuff. It's usually at comic book sized in uh, 600 DPI. Nate talks about how he letters at that size. But when I'm like, and I get like all different kinds of sizes of pages from artists. Like, you know, it, it's the wild west out there and like, I'll kind of make it work, but I'll hand it to a letterer and I'd be like, good luck, you know? So like, I didn't even know, like when you start lettering, like what's the template, you know what I mean? Like I, so in the weeds that like a YouTube like tutorial was not going to help me. I needed like a book. Yeah. And uh, I'm here to say, I'm a hundred pages in. I haven't tackled sound effects or anything like that. Just I've just tackled word balloons and there's not only that, but there's stuff in here about like 
the origin of a lot of like lettering techniques with uh, attributed to different letterers. And if you're oh, that's cool. into that's really cool. comics at all, where you're like, I love process and I love this stuff. And I want to see like what a letterer, letterer does and why it's an art form. Like, I, like I, I knew it was an art form beforehand because I've read some books that were poorly lettered. And I'm like, oh, this guy didn't get it. But I didn't quite know the intricacies of it. You read this and you will know. You will come out the other side being like, I fucking get it. I hope this book does not ruin other comic books for me. Like, <laughs> I hope that, like, my worry is that, like, I'll start to know lettering inside and out. And then I'll start reading comics and I'll be like, oh, man, the stacking on that balloon is real bad. And I'll just be like, oh no, I'm in, I'm in my head. I've ruined it. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I think, I think you'll figure it out. Cause I think, I think yeah, you're the yeah, same. I'll figure it out. I, yeah. I think you're the same way with coloring with, with the colors yeah. where it's like, yeah. unless it's some egregious that you might see something that annoys you, but you're like, yeah, whatever. You yeah. Know? Whatever. Like, yeah, you're yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah. I get it. I get it. It's fine. You know, like, we're all pressed for time. Encyclopedia is a weird word. It's going to stack your shit wrong in that balloon. Like I get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's all right, man. You don't. Yeah. You, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You had a family to go home to. It's okay. <laughs> right, right, right. You let this one balloon slide. Yeah, uh, yeah, it'll be all right. At any rate, that is the essential guide to comic book lettering. I highly oh, recommend it. It's put out through Image, uh, which I thought was oh, kind of interesting. That's nice. That's awesome. That's awesome. But yeah, I love. Yeah, I love our two read pile this week. I mean, I always it's like. So them. I always like weird, them a lot, Jason. but it's it's so. It's so please tell me you have a Starman update or something so we could talk about some actual like superhero comic books. I'm I'm still really digging Starman, but for the love of God, I either need a new iPad or DC needs to make an entirely new app because I've been having to read like like all the other bat books I had to read on my computer this week because like it just, you know, but Starman is really digging star man he uh yeah he kind of have uh, you been have you been chipping away at it your past first oh yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 oh yeah oh yeah i'm i'm you know i don't want to especially this early i don't i don't want to say anything you know specifically okay. for you too because there's there's okay. like a thing that happens that i think i think i still think you'll really really like the book i, I think you'll i really do want to i do want to fire it up i actually uh got a couple of reactions out of i, I posted the to read pile in a couple of places and uh, people were like, oh, shit, Starman. <laughs> I was like, yeah, they were yeah. saying that Starman Starman is a um, origin of how DC started building kind of legacy characters and legacy stories. They said that Starman and uh, Mark Wade's stuff is like the, the beginning point of this in like the 90s. Oh, wow. Yeah, that makes a Which lot I thought of sense. It was like kind of interesting. Yeah, because of what they're doing now with like you know, the uh, son of Superman and Batman's yeah. son. And so they're, yeah, they're allowing yeah, yeah. like, yeah. Oh yeah. That's, that's, that's really cool. A but, lot of the DNA of this stuff is like seeped into modern DC comics. Hmm. hmm. That's really cool. It's really good. Cool. But, but yeah, it's, it's man, Starman still, it's still really good. Still really great. Still, yeah. still, gotta give it still a hitting shot. it. Still nice. hitting it. Nice. It, it uh, uh, Oscar Wilde made an appearance. Okay. Like it's, 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 it's amazing. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. Man. Yeah. I, uh, oh, good. I finished my, my hundred page, 101 page graphic novel. So, uh, that's partly why I didn't read any comics. Cause I like pushing myself to finish that. But I know that the reason I was reading this comic book lettering thing is because I know I have a, uh, Star Trek book, which, uh, deep space nine dog of war just dropped, uh, this week. So everyone, if you're a Deep Space Nine fan, check that out. It Good slots man. into season six, uh, you know, at the end of the season. It's like a lost episode, quote unquote. Um, I think we're making something really special there because there hasn't really been a great Deep Space Nine comic out there. And I think this is one. So, yeah, if you like Deep Space Nine, I, I won't continue to plug. But I know that I'm going to be working on DS9 for a week and then I have a couple of other projects that aren't announced yet that I'm like waiting to get pages for. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to have a, I'm going to have a window and I don't know how long the window is, 
but I'm going to try to letter this fucking comic book <laughs> that, I, that I'm making on the side. So I'm like, I have to read this now. <laughs> it's like, it's like, you're like, you're like the, the, the greyhound at the track, just like waiting to be, to be let out. Yeah, the right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Give me that rabbit. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, Jason, Nick. where can people find you? People can find me at uh, World's Second Finest on Twitter. That's World's Second with a two. Whenever I remember to update the damn thing again, I'm sorry to social media. I'm sorry that I have not uh, actually built our website yet. Jason, you know I'm I'm editing two podcasts on the side, right? Like, like I'm editing this and the two read pile. And the, and, yeah. And I'm asking you to post on social media once a week. Yeah. But you're killing me. Yeah, I'm roasting should, you should, publicly, only because that. I love you. I should get. I should. I should get to that. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna get to that. But at, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna. As, yeah. Uh, at world second finest on the Twitter machine. I'm also at yep. King of Black Acid on the Twitter yep. machine. I think because I'm so tired of saying the Twitter machine and even talking about it. <laughs> let's, let's let's see what else happens let's see if i buy a hot air balloon with uh i will say i will say the the only other reason that i am roasting you on it is because i do see the analytics and when you do post people do click it so like the more you post the more people actually re like listen to the podcast so you know yeah it yeah it is a yeah, thing kind of, yeah kind of the more the more you tell <laughs> people a little behind the behind the curtain for you all i guess i don't, I don't yeah. know what the fuck this is i'm having a conversation with jason now you guys are not don't listen to this don't listen to this part i'll tell you when you can start listening again yep. oh, okay. okay start listening again yeah uh, right, right. you can find me at linktree.com slash nick i don't have anything else to say other than that jason oh well you know thanks for listening yeah thanks for listening yeah